Hey everybody, Dan from Sci-Fi Models and Stuff here. And today I'm going to be showing you how to paint the 1-6 Frankenstein kit from Horizon Models. First I'm going to show you a little bit about the unique processes in completing a vinyl kit. And then show you how to turn this into this. By the way, uh, despite the monster in question being officially known as Frankenstein's monster, throughout the video I'm going to be referring to him simply as Frankenstein. Let's jump right in. Vinyl parts need to be trimmed and sanded. This is pretty self-explanatory, but I wanted to show you the process of just how easy it is. First, you can kind of heat the material up a little bit with a hairdryer, and it cuts right off. Next, the parts have to be washed to remove any mold release material that might still be on the parts. And lastly, vinyl kits need to be filled with something before construction. And this is to stop any warping that might happen. There's a few ways to do this. You can fill the parts with plaster, or with any other material really. Here I use packing peanuts and newspaper in addition to the plaster. After construction, I work on filling any seams in the arms. I use a two-part epoxy putty, and it takes some time to sculpt the joints correctly. And after that's done, I prime the whole sculpt in gray. For my base coat, I'm going to be using uh, kind of an off-white green. And then over the top of that, I'm going to blend in some yellows and purples and stuff, and really kind of make it look nasty and rotted. So I'm just kind of winging it right now. I'm uh, I have a couple ideas of what I want to do, but I'm just going to experiment a little bit. No! Okay, so that went pretty well. Um, nice and subtle so far. The color of Frankenstein's skin is often hotly debated. Um, of course, a lot of people seem to think it's green. Um, I prefer mine to be more on the grayish yellow end of the spectrum. So just keep that in mind. I've mixed up a little bit of a yellow, green, pink, gross, rotted flesh color. And I'm gonna just go in there real lightly and uh, mist over that, add some definition. So it's looking good and subtle, but it's also moving a little bit to the green side of the spectrum, a little bit further than I would like. Um, so it's time to kind of adjust and bring it back. And just like a, a lot of figures, sometimes you need to do this. If you go too far in one direction, you just gotta bring it back. Okay, so I'm gonna be moving forward with some oils. Uh, we're gonna use a lot of the red, I think. A little bit of blue to make a, a purple color and yellow to kind of shift the tone back. All right, so I'm starting off with a little bit of red. Got it thinned down quite a bit. I'm just going to be applying it around in the crevices and stuff. In our ear, the hairline. Blending, not letting it get too heavy in any area. Okay. Go and do the same with just the top. 
tiniest amount of blue. That's probably a little bit too much. You see that it's starting to kind of mix with the red and give a little bit of a purple shade here. And finally, we're gonna come in with a little yellow. Going a little bit heavier with the yellow because again, I kind of want yellowish tones. I think that's actually starting to get me what I want. Oh, way, way too much. Dab that a little bit with a Q-tip and let it sit and kind of dry itself out a little bit. Okay, starting to look better. Still not quite where we want it, but for the base tones, that's good. We'll come back and do some washes to get some of the details. Um, to kind of get an idea of how this works, I'm gonna paint the pupil now, or uh, paint the the eyes now. It's probably a little bit too early in the game to be doing this, but I'm gonna do it anyways and we'll see how it looks. So I've mixed up, mixed up some kind of off-white ivory and uh, I'm just gonna get in there with a little brush. Okay, so I'm gonna go back in with some uh, purple and red oil paint because we're still just a little bit too green. And I'm gonna hit the bags around the eyes, the eyelids. Around the mouth. Just starting to outline some stuff. This is all going to be blended away. Things are still looking a bit too green. So I've mixed up uh, a transparent flesh color. And I'm really just gonna dust some stuff on here. Just painting the black base coat for the hair. Again, this gives us kind of a reference point to see how we're doing on the skin. Okay, painted the hair, uh, which helps really get an idea of how the skin is looking. It's really glossy right now because of the paint I'm using, so that kind of makes it difficult to tell too. Um, and also keep in mind the hair is just kind of temporary for right now. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is go on with a little more flesh tone and uh, bring the color a little more neutral yellow. That's what I'm looking for. I sprayed down like that so uh, you get the flesh tones for the highlights and you still kind of have some green underneath. So, cool. Right now I'm going around the eye with a dark flesh oil paint. I'm gonna blend all that out in a second here. But building some color around there. This is a really versatile color. I've talked about it in a lot of my videos. And that kind of gives a good bags under the eye color. I'm gonna get some red and pink up in there. Make that look kind of like an open wound. 
actually going to be mixing a little bit of purple in there. And while I'm here on the edge, I'm going to do some of the hairline. as well. And here, just adding a bit of brown in a couple areas. Inside the ear, a little bit too much there. Really looks good. And the nose. Darkening these lines. The face just a little bit. <laughs> Filtrum. Base of the nose. And just a little bit around the eyelids. Touch inside the lips. Around the chin. bit more oh man there we go well, I'm working I'm gonna paint his little neck bolts as well eventually we'll add a little rust and wear on these and so puckering gross skin around them. Okay, starting to look good. Good, good. And I'm just adding a little bit of purple on the upper eyelids. Gonna look like bruising. I'm gonna thin it out quite a bit. But just to give that general idea. Purple and pink by the neck bolts. Purple is one of those colors you really gotta be careful with. I think by itself it doesn't look good but when you really blend it down. I think this will be a cool effect. One color that we've really been avoiding using is green. And I think it's time to add just a little bit back in there. I'm using a sap green, it's called, which is uh, kind of a dark, gross green. I often use it a lot for mildew, or in this case, rot. And I think under the chin like that, it looks pretty good. Again, around the bolts, we want to make that look as infected and gross as possible. Base of the neck, a little bit in the hair, and the edges of this, the face. Get some pink in there too. The pink and green. It's gonna look good. It's really looking good. Still a little bit glossy, so it's hard to tell, but. I'm going to add a little bit of that pink to this scar up here. Fill that in. 
this thing on his cheek too. And a few of the outside edges. Cheekbones. Tip of the nose. Okay, making really good progress in the face here. I'm actually gonna put the pupil in. Um, unlike regular tits, Frankenstein's eyes are kind of weird. So they actually get placed way up in the top. Give it a shot. Hopefully, hopefully I don't have to redo it. No. Okay, so it's still shiny, I still need to dull coat. But I think I'm really pretty happy with the way it came out. Still need to touch up the hair a little bit. Um, but that's great, and compared that to the base color here on the hands. So what I'm gonna do next is get the hands to match, if I can remember what I did, and then we'll move on. Okay, so I had the pants all blocked out, looking pretty good. I'm gonna do the jacket and the shirt, I've decided. For the shirt, I'm gonna do a black, and for the jacket, I'm gonna do kind of like a, a black charcoal mix, just to get it started. Um, I posted a, a few pictures online to get some initial feedback. And one of the pieces of feedback I got was that the shadows under the eyes aren't pronounced enough. So we're just gonna darken those up a little bit, add a touch more contrast. I've mixed up uh, some purple oil paint. We're gonna thin it down quite a bit. Fill in these shadows here. It's actually a little bit too thin there. gonna fill in the areas under the eyes like that for that I'm using just a little foam brush And that's all we have. Thanks for watching, everybody. As always, please come check us out on Instagram at sci fi models and stuff. And if you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. All right, we'll see you next time.